Brian Wagner. Brian is another Ignite veteran and has joined Mid-Atlantic Dogs in early 2007 where he became a volunteer search and rescue canine handler with his search dog, Abby. They responded to more than 100 searches throughout Maryland, Virginia, and Pennsylvania and are credited with two live finds during Abby's career. Through training and experience, Brian is listed as a qualified search manager by the Maryland State Police. Please welcome Brian to the stage as he enlightens us on search and rescue dogs. Brian. All right, so Abby was born in February 2007, and I have no idea of knowing exactly what her birthday was because at about eight weeks old, I adopted her from the Carroll County Humane Society. I was going to train her to be an air scent search dog. We joined Mid-Atlantic Dogs, a professional volunteer search and rescue organization that specializes in providing canine search resources to law enforcement agencies throughout Maryland, Virginia, and the surrounding areas. AirScent search dogs are trained to find missing people in a given area and are not scent specific like a tra trailing dog. They'll find anyone. Humans put off scent constantly like smoke from a fire, and these dogs can identify human scent and follow it to its source. Dogs have a tremendous ability to differentiate scents. I like to give the example of a restaurant that serves pizza. When we walk in, we simply smell pizza. However, when a dog walks in, it smells the toppings, the dough, the sauce, and the seasonings. As search dogs, we were typically given a defined area to clear and tell the law enforcement where the subject was not. To do this, we were given defined areas comprised of anything from 20 to 100 acres. It would take about three to four hours to clear 100 acres, and based on this premise and using trained and qualified search teams, law enforcement can realistically search three or 400 acres in simply three or four hours using three or four dog teams. Now you may be asking how you train a dog to work for so long in hopes of finding someone, and the simple answer is time and repetition. We would train every weekend with the team, and we would constantly train at home with things like obedience. Keep in mind that air scent dogs work off leash and verbal commands are key. I remember working Abby along major highways such as 140 outside Westminster, Interstate 270 in Frederick, and even Route 26 and the Liberty Reservoir Bridge. To qualify as a professional search dog, Abby was required to pass six skill set evaluations. Non search evaluations included temperament, agi agility, and obedience. We often put the dogs in demanding scenarios and knowing how they would react was key. Rarely would a team be sent to a search via aircraft. However, we would still introduce every dog to the Maryland State Police helicopter just to understand how they would react. We would also use things like Halloween masks, loud noises, and even grabbing the dogs, all for the purpose of training. We also passed three search evaluations. The first was a mile-long trail with one subject placed along it. A second was a 40-acre night evaluation, and lastly, a 160-acre test that had up to three people in it and a six-hour time limit. I also had to prove my abilities with skills such as navigation, first aid, and radio communications before we were made an official team and capable of responding to searches. More often than not, searches we responded to were not widely broadcast over the media. We would respond to anywhere from one to three searches a month, but have seen that number decrease in recent years simply due to technology. Most searches were for people who suffer from dementia or Alzheimer's and they walked off from a residence or a location. But we also searched for suicidal people, runaway children, and even criminal-related situations. There were two searches that I do remember that were somewhat high profile. One was in Virginia, and it was Morgan Harrington that went missing from a Metallica concert from the University of Virginia in 2009. And the second was the murder of Felicia Barnes from Baltimore City. We searched multiple locations in Baltimore and Howard counties based on cell phone data of the sus suspect looking for her body. Abby had a fantastic career as a search dog, including two live finds, the first of which was in Eldersburg down by the reservoir. We found a man who had walked off from a care home there, and the second was outside of Hagerstown. On that search, a retired farmer with dementia was lost in the cornfield behind his residence. Uh, we found him as he walked into a drainage swale immediately in front of us and were able to walk him back to his family. Uh, Abby was retired 
in the summer of 2015, just before my son was born, because I didn't feel like I could maintain her training to an adequate point where I felt comfortable telling law enforcement that the subject was not there. They simply put a ton of uh, responsibility on us to and respect for our training to trust that when we said they weren't there, that they were not there and they would look somewhere else. She became sick this past December with a mass in her mouth and passed away on February 27th. In the weeks after becoming sick, we returned to search training with her, and after not searching for more than two and a half years, we tackled a 40-acre search area with two missing subjects. Unprompted, Abdi made great finds and looked as if she had never stopped working. Search was truly her passion. Thank you.